So hey everybody, thanks for saying you'd like to watch me cook for a while. Uh, I wasn't going to start these videos until tomorrow because Peter and I are trying to eat out the fridge and have a lot of leftovers, but uh, quite a number of you actually asked about the marmalade I was making and we're on to step two today and I thought I'd share that. I promise from here on out I will always start at step one, but uh, I'm just going to walk you through everything I did yesterday and then we're going to go ahead and finish up our marmalade. I also know that uh, starting with a canning video is going to high skills, but hey, in these uh, trying times we might want to learn how to preserve, right? So let's... Uh, Let's go ahead and do that. Just a couple of quick notes. You'll notice that I am using a wooden spatula with a silicone top. Uh, that is one choice that you can make. You can just use a wooden spoon, you can use rubber, you can use silicone, any of that would be fine. What you don't want to use when you're canning, specifically when you're canning something acidic like citrus fruit or tomatoes, is anything with aluminum in it. Stainless steel, also fine. I'll be cooking in an enameled pot today. And uh, as we get a little later into the video, we're also going to talk about how to sterilize the jars so that everything that you're eating is nice and safe and sterile and should last for about a year. I decided to make marmalade on a whim. We were at the grocery store. We were out of jam. Jam in jars is expensive and oranges were on sale. So I bought a 1.5 bag, pound bag of oranges, cost me about $4, uh, and a one pound bag of lemons, which I have not completely used, and a two kilogram bag of sugar. Two kilograms of sugar costs about three dollars. I'm also not using all two kilograms of sugar, but full fair warning, and you'll see when I add it, this is not diabetic friendly. Siegfried does not like making movies. Okay, good stuff, Ziggy. Or maybe he was just a little bit concerned about the fact that there is just over a thousand grams, 1,250 grams of sugar in this recipe, but please bear in mind that we are making at least 12 jars of marmalade here, uh, about five liters. How did I get to my five liters? All I did yesterday was take my beautiful oranges and lemons, and I'll uh, use a lemon as an exemplar here. I cut scores in quarters along the peel and simply removed that, set that aside, cut the lemons and oranges in half, juiced them with my little $2 plastic juicer, uh, set all of that juice aside, and took the seeds and the pith, so the pith is that yucky white stuff, and I tied those things up into this bag of Muslim cheesecloth. Oh, and here, thank you so much, Peter's handing me my little $2 juicer. You can literally buy these at the buck store and they work great. In here is any pulp, any pith, and any seeds that came off my orange. This is just a bag of cheesecloth. You can use any kind of cotton and tie it up with any kind of tie twine, that's just fine. So a lot of the times when you're eating or using this fruit, this stuff is gonna be considered garbage. Uh, but in this case, this is where the pectin from the marmalade is going to come from. So what the pectin is, is the compound that makes everything nice and thick and jammy. A lot of the time when you're canning strawberries or other kinds of fruits, you would buy something called liquid pectin. You would add it into the mix. Uh, in this case, the fruit creates its own pectin right here in the bag. I then took those reserved peels and I cut them into nice thin strips. You know, it's marmalade. You want to be able to spread this on toast, but still have some nice strips of fruit there. And that's what I did yesterday. Sounds like a lot of labor, I know, but it was two records worth of work, so about 40 minutes. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the fruit, the fruit juice, and I topped the juice up with enough water to make it four liters. I had just under a liter of fruit juice by the time I juiced all my fruits. Everything else here is topped up with water. We've got the fruit peel and we've got our big old muslin bag full of pectin making goodness. I'm gonna set this on the boil and bring it up to a hard boil. At this time, there's no sugar in it whatsoever. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes and my fruit here is now up to what's called a rolling boil. And if you've ever been curious what a rolling boil is, well, this is it. Your water or juice should be boiling so hard that the force of it is stirring everything around, making those great big bubbles. We are going to turn this down to what my recipe, and by the way, I'm using a recipe by Nigel Slater uh, that was posted in The Guardian in 2017. 
We're turning this down to what's called a hard simmer, so between three and four as opposed to one or two, but we'll keep an eye on that. This is going to simmer now until our little pieces of peel that are in here are soft, meaning that we can bite through them nice and easily and translucent. That can take anywhere from 40 to 50 minutes, so we're going to leave that on to simmer for that time. So we've been boiling for just about 50 minutes and we're just about ready to go. Uh, before we move on to the next step, we're going to do just a little bit of prep. You can see I'm holding a plain old ordinary dessert plate. I'm actually just going to chuck this in my freezer. Uh, Peter, I don't know if you want to film the contents of our freezer. It's a bit embarrassing. Um, that's going to be there to get a little bit cold. It's going to be used in about half an hour as a doneness testing. We're going to go over that in a few moments. So, in the ensuing 50 or so minutes that this has been simmering, you can see my peel has become nice and translucent and very hot and this is a nice thick piece and nice and soft and easy to bite into. It's also extremely bitter which is why we're going to add the sugar. Before we do that we are going to grab up some tongs and take out our Muslim bag here, full of goodness. This has been floating and bubbling away with us, adding all its nice pectin. I'm just gonna let that drain for a sec. And drain and drain. Now don't worry, we're not wasting any of this. We're just setting it aside underneath this lovely open window until it's cool enough to handle, and then we're going to squeeze all of that goodness out. In the interim though, all of this sugar, but please remember how many jars of marmalade we're making, is going to go into the mix, and we're going to bring it up to a rolling boil again. So here we go, 1,250 grams of the good stuff. I imagine that there are diabetic friendly recipes out there, for things like jams and marmalade, which would give you sugar alternatives. I will just caution you when you're canning. Uh, it's kind of like making candy. You want to be very, very careful to follow a recipe to the T with things like sugar and pectin uh, so that you make sure that you are creating something that is thick and gooey and delicious and will preserve for a good long time. So we're going to turn the heat up, get that onto a rolling boil, while this has been simmering, we have started our great big canner pot boiling here. Uh, you can see there's a whole ton of water. Now, if you don't have a gigantic specialized canner pot like this, that's okay. You can use a soup pot, you can use a spaghetti pot. What you want is a big pot full of boiling water, and I'll show you how to do the jars in just a moment. Okay. While our canner is coming up to a rolling boil, I'm going to show you a few tools of the canning trade. Uh, none of these are necessary, except of course your sealing jars, but they are going to make your life a lot easier, and they're really inexpensive. You can usually buy a little $5 canning kit at Walmart or Canadian Tire, and during the summer you'll often find them at grocery stores as well. What those kits are going to come with are your jar grabbing tongs, your jar filling funnel and a little magnet here which is really really useful for grabbing jar lids out of boiling water so that you don't burn yourself. As a pro tip I usually burn myself at least six times when I'm canning but they're never very serious burns. <laughs> Over here you can see our water is now up to a rolling boil. So it's time for us to put the jars in and process them. What we're going to do is put the jars in... Sterilize. I apologize. Sterilize the jars. Yeah. Processing comes after. We're going to put the jars into the boiling water, make sure that that water comes back up to a rolling boil. We'll leave them in there for a good 10 minutes at a rolling boil, and then we can remove them. The jars will be nice and sterile. They'll also be screaming hot. So just grab your tongs. Grab your jars, go in on an angle, let them fill up with water. You want to make sure that they're standing up there in the bottom of your pot and you drop them in. It's important to make sure that your boiling water 
comes up to one inch above the tallest jar that you're using. Uh, we're using some variety jars here. Just jars that we've had from other projects that we've washed in the dishwasher and are now sterilizing for canning. So the biggest jar I'm using is a half pint jar and that's just because, you know, how much marmalade do you want to have in one open jar? Don't answer that, Facebook. I'm, I'm concerned that it might be a lot. <laughs> okay, so our marmalade has now been boiling for almost an hour. How long it boils is going to be really dependent on how much liquid you have, how much pectin you've drawn out, uh, the air temperature in your own home, and even your elevation. It's not an exact science. It can be done in as little as 20 minutes. In our case, it took about an hour. One of the ways you can tell it's done, remember my little frozen plate? I put about a tablespoon of marmalade on there and you can see it's running as a unit. It's coming off nice and thick. If you have a candy thermometer, what you're looking for is to get it to about 220 degrees. And you can see that the marmalade is reduced by half. It's a lot darker now. It's sticky and ready to go. It's still gonna feel really runny when you pour it in the jars. And in fact, it won't do its second and final set for 24 to 48 hours. So what we're going to do now is we're gonna pull the jars out of the boiling water, fill them up, and then reprocess our jars. Then we leave them to sit for a couple of days, okay? One last tip. You can see there's just a little bit of foam here in your marmalade. I've been skimming this off as it's been boiling. You want to do one last skim, and that's just so that your marmalade is nice and clear when you take it out. You want it to look like sunset uh, on a nice clear day, not like orange fish tank water. Our jars out of our boiling water, and they're sterile now. They've been boiling for at least 10 minutes. They're still screaming hot, and so is my marmalade, which means it's the perfect time to fill the jars up. When you're going to process jars for preserving, you do want to make sure that you only fill to about a quarter of an inch from the top of every jar. Do that carefully. That's where my handy dandy funnel comes in. So you just grab a ladle. This is an ordinary stainless steel ladle. Some of those drips off there. That's the good stuff. You want to make sure you get lots of nice peel in there because that is the part that you want. And I get just a little bit more in that jar. Just a tad, just like that. A little bit more. Maybe a touch more, says Pete. He's actually really the canning expert. He does most of our tomatoes. Oh, there we good. go. Perfect. All right, so we're going to fill up the rest of these bad boys and we'll come back and show you how to put the lids on and throw them into processing. We have finished filling up our jars. And what I'm doing now is just wiping off the rims, making sure there aren't any sticky bits left. Again, when you are canning to put things up for an extended period of time, Sanitation means safety, so you want to just make sure that everything is nice and clean before you put the lids on the jars. You'll notice we have two extra jars here. We sterilized 11 jars and ended up filling nine. That's canning. It's not an exact science. There's nothing wrong with these jars. They can go back in the cupboard. But if you do want to use them again, you will have to re-sterilize them. Well, we've been filling our jars. We've been sterilizing the jar lids. Peter and I are gonna take a couple of minutes, snap those lids on, and put the jars of marmalade back into the boiling water to process. We'll be grabbing our jar lids out of the boiling water with our handy magnet. As far as processing time is concerned, this is one place you want to be very exact. Again, this comes down to safety. Now, my recipe from Mr. Slater didn't have a processing time on it. I've looked up on a number of different sources on marmalade and jams have all indicated that when you're sitting around sea level, which we are here in Sudbury, you can go ahead and process these for just five minutes. Uh, if you're at a much higher elevation, so if you're living up in the mountains somewhere or a much lower elevation, if you're down right at sea level, like somewhere in BC, you're gonna wanna go ahead and uh, increase or decrease the time that you're processing these accordingly. Just make sure you're looking up for the region that you're in. So we're going to throw these down to process. We'll check in with you guys one more time before we say goodbye. So I am filming Peter doing this part, which is putting the jar lids on. 
because I hate putting jar lids on and Pete's really good at it. What he's doing right now is just putting those rings on just finger tight. That's all you need to do to process it. After the jars are protest, uh, <laughs> protested, uh, processed. They might protest. They might protest a little. After the jars are processed, you'll take them uh, out. You'll put them right back on a tea towel like this one. And uh, you'll wait. The lids are going to make a popping sound. It's a very obvious noise. It'll take a few hours and they'll go. Uh, once you hear that popping sound, that's when you can tighten those jar lids. Uh, just give them a good hard crank so that your marmalade stays nice and fresh. Now. For this recipe, you can see we've got nine jars here. That's exactly two liters of marmalade that we've made. And that's from 10 uh, smallish to medium sized oranges, four medium sized lemons, uh, five, sorry, four liters of liquid, juice, and water, and 1.25 kilograms of sugar. So the return on investment on this one is pretty high. Pete's going to pop these into that boiling water for five more minutes to process, and we'll see you one more time after that. So while we're putting these in the water, one more thing. Uh, if your water hasn't boiled down a little, which ours has, it's been on for a while, you may want to just watch uh, how much water is in your canner as you put your full jars back in. Of course, physics being a thing, the now full jars are going to be heavier. They're going to displace a lot more water, so you do want to just make sure that your canner isn't over full. I'm watching our last four jars go in and it looks like we're good and we're just over an inch over the rim of our tallest jar again. Alrighty, out they come, processed and ready to go, our beautiful jars of marmalade. Oop, pop! So that's good to know, they are popping. And that's the finished product right there. These are going to want to go ahead and rest on your counter for at least 24 and up to 48 hours. Pop! That's a good noise, by the way. That means everything worked properly. Just a few last words. Uh, I went ahead and did, as I said, 10 oranges and 2 lemons for this. That's because Peter really likes bitter marmalade. So we've made something very, very bitter. If you want something free to... Wow, sweeter, you can go ahead and just use oranges. If you want to mix it up a little, you can absolutely put in grapefruit. Really, any citrus fruit is going to work in a marmalade recipe. The other thing to remember when you're canning is to make sure that you make up some labels. Marmalades and jams have a much longer shelf life. They're going to last for at least a year. If you want to make tomatoes, pickled vegetables, uh, pickled eggs, anything like that, check the shelf life in your recipe. Just make sure you make up a little canning label with what it is that you've made the month and the year. So here we go. End of days marmalade, March 2020. Thanks so much for doing this with me, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that if you've been at all nervous about canning, you can see that if I can do it, I mean, anyone can. We're going to get back to some basics tomorrow and talk about uh, bony and thickened chicken size and chicken legs. See you soon.